Our next presenter are Dr. Tie Yi Young Park and Dr. Tie Yi Young Wong. Dr. Tie Yi Young Park currently works as a postdoctoral research fellow in the National Energy Technology Laboratory of Mong Ganton. He got a master and PhD degree in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering in Korea and in the Advanced Institute of Science and Technology case in the young Korea. And he got his bachelor's degree in the Department of Air and Environmental Science in the University of Rochester. Now, P.A. Young is working in energy and sustainable environmental geotechnology coupled by geochemical, physical processes in porous media and particulate materials and sustainable bioengineered soils in the application of petroleum EOR, methane, and hydrates. Dr. T.A.E. Young Wang currently works as a associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology case in Korea. He received his bachelor, master, and PhD degree in civil and environmental engineering at CASE, and his graduated work focused on dissociation of gas hydrobearing sediments and its effect of sediment stability. TA1 research interest is in understanding of alteration in subsurface properties of relevance to environmental and energy processes. And his technological focus in the field is on understanding biochemical, chemo, thermal, and hydromechanical processes in subsurface environments through multi scale experimentation and modeling. Thank you very much, uh, doctors, for being here today with us. And thank you very much for your presentation. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to meet you all here. I'm Taehyuk Kwon, working at KAIST Korea. And this talk is mostly based on the work with Dr. Taehyung Park in, in NETL USA. Um, the slides here are also mostly prepared by Taehyung, so I would like to acknowledge him before I start. So today I will talk about in-situ bacterial modification of fluid rock interfacial properties for microbial inest oil recovery, MUR. So as we know, um, UR or MUR is considered as the tertiary recovery stage and it's often involves water flooding. The water flooding is governed by the flows of two immersible mixed fluid. Therefore, in many cases, capillarity affects the flow behavior and displacement efficiency, especially for water speed sweeping stage. Interfacial tension or IFT in short is determined, oh, sorry, the capillary pressure or capillary factor affects the fluid behavior as shown in this figure. Um, and this capillary factor and capillarity is affected by two components. One is the interfacial tension between fluids and the other is wettability. Um, interfacial tension uh, or IFT in short is uh, determined by the excess energy of the molecules at the interface here. And this differs with the fluid. Uh, for example, water air will have the 72 uh, millinewton per meter and ethanol air will have 22 and water and dodecane, which is the um, typically used oil simulant, light oil simulant, uh, has the interface tension of 50 millinewton per meter. And wettability is also represented by the contact angle. If the rock is water wet, then the wat uh, water wetting angle is low, uh, less than 45 degree. And if it is oil wet, then the, the contact angle or the water wetting angle will be greater than 90. Uh, in between, we call it intermediate water wet condition. Um, then the addition of surfactant to water phase reduces the interface tension and alters the solid surface to be, mo to be more water wet. Um, this will reduce the capillary pressure. So, and as the concentration of the surfactant increases, the IFT and decreases um, until the concentration which is the critical concentration. Um, so, but after this critical concentration or critical myosin concentration, um, 
the further addition of the surfactant does not decrease or change the sur surface tension or interfacial tension. Um, meanwhile, the biosurfactant is getting more attention as an alternative to the chemical surfactant because of their uh, low to toxicity and ecological suitability and biodegradability, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the most well-known biosurfactants are the rhamnorepid, which is pro produced by the pseudomonas species, and the surfactin, produced by the bacillus uh, subtilis species. Um, so the, when biosurfactant is added to the water when you flood it for the uh, oil sweeping, um, it can retrieve more oil uh, that's trapped in the post media by reducing the interface tension and uh, altering the uh, um, wettability of the rock. So, um, therefore, this study aims to evaluate the feasibility of using biosurfactant producing bacteria as an enhancer for MUR. We can use a strategy to inject bacteria and nutrient to facilitate the surfactant production, and then the water sweeping can follow. Then the follow uh, scientific questions are, um, can they live in in-situ reservoir conditions when we you know, injected the um, inoculum? And then, um, then if they, uh, can they produce the biosurfactant in the condition? Then if so, how much would they produce biosurfactant? Would it be enough to alter the uh, interfacial properties? Um, so to what extent the produced biosurfactant changed the interfacial tension and the uh, wearability? Um, and then the last question will be, um, because you, don't, uh, you can compare the efficacy or the effectiveness of the biosurfactant to the chemical surfactant. So is it you know, cost effective or you know, in terms of the performance, is it comparable to the chemical surfactant? That will be the last question to answer. So for this study, we chose a model bacterium called Bacillus subtilis, uh, which produces biosurfactants called surfactin. And this bacterium is found in, um, in many places in nature. Uh, also, it can survive the, uh, the extreme conditions like uh, high pH and low pH and the warm temperature and the high pressure. Also, the very saline conditions because of its in endospore forming uh, characteristic. It's a facultative anaerobic, so it doesn't require the oxygen to uh, thrive. And uh, when you stimulate them with the proper nutrient, it produces the biosurfactant. So this excellent bioagent for the interfacial property modification. Um, this is the test setup that we use for the interfacial tension and the contact angle measurement during the uh, biosurfactant production in situ. Um, first, we prepare the fresh crossed medium in the reactor here and uh, inoculate the bacterial culture using this um, transfer vessel, which contains the brine and uh, set the temperature and the pressure at the, you know, the predetermined values. And then dodecane drop was injected from the bottom to make a, a you know, pendant drop, like here, as you see in the panel A, or you can make a sessile drop that's in contact with the quartz substrate. So we use the quartz as a rock uh, surf mineral surface here, and dodecane as an oil simulant. So for the pendant drop here, the, by taking the image from here, um, we can identify the uh, interfacial tension. And by looking at the angle between the uh, quartz substrate and the oil droplet, we can also obtain the contact angle. So we can monitor, or we can take the picture time lapsed, and uh, we can monitor the change in interfacial tension and the um, contact angle over the course of the bacterial uh, growth and also the biosurfactant production. Um, this slide shows the actual setup. So we have a high resolution camera and transfer vessel and high pressure pump. And this is the, the actual uh, reaction vessel um, reactor. Uh, inside, we can put the, uh, any mi rock mineral sub substrate. And you know, by looking at the images, we can uh, obtain the and determine the interface tension and the um, contact angle. 
Um, so we ran in total um, six tests at three different temperatures, 35, 40, and 45 degrees Celsius. Um, all of them were conducted under the pressure of the 10 megapascal, which is very high, so which is comparable to the reservoir condition. And uh, we used the quartz as a, a rock mineral and dodecane as the oil simulant. And here we use the bacillus subtilis as the model bacteria. Um, as you can see in this picture here, um, in the beginning it's very clean, but as time goes by, it produces the uh, it grows, so that it can it can be um, uh, it will be very cloudy. And when you shake it, it because of the surfactant inside, um, it forms the like uh, the very small micro bubbles right here, emulsions. So um, this is the result now. So at 35 degrees Celsius and the 10 megapascal during the uh, bacterial growth and the biosurfactant production, the interface tension decreased from 50 to 10 millinewton per meter, and concentration increased to 120 milligram per liter, so which is very high. Huh? Um, so you can see that the interfacial tension reaches to the, uh, the lower limit. So after this lower limit, even though the surfactant concentration increased, it didn't uh, reduce further down. Huh? Um, in the beginning of the bacterial growth, they consumed the glucose and the ammonium for the nitrogen source. But after the ammonium is almost depleted, they use the nitrate as a nitrogen source. And from that, the rate of the surfactant production was significantly improved. No? So you can see from as they began to consume the nitrate, uh, surfactant production was dramatically uh, increased. Um, we found the same phenomena and uh, the result at 40 degrees Celsius and the 45 degrees Celsius um, in all of tests the interface tension decreased from 50 to 10, which is the lower limit. Um, but in the 45 degrees Celsius, which is the, uh, the warmest temperature we uh, tested, the surfactant production was the least, which was about only the half of the case that we run in S35 degrees Celsius. Mm. When you look at the contact angle, so contact angle decreased from 50 to 20 degrees degree. So which means that they are, it was a intermediate water wet and now it's more uh, strongly water wet case. Um, also the surfactant was produced to 120 milligram, which is the uh, very consistent value to the uh, interfacial tension measurement test. In, at the 40 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius, all of them, the contact angle decreased from 50 degrees to about 20 here, and also the here. Um, and 45 degrees Celsius, as you can expect, the surfactant production was the least. So when you plot it, when you plot the interfacial tension change with the surfactant concentration in the brine, um, you can see that the uh, critical Micelle concentration was uh, ranged 30 to 40 micrometer, micromole per liter. Um, and uh, below that, the surfactant uh, critical micelle concentration, CMC, the interfacial ten tension was reduced proportionally to the surfactant concentration. And this is, uh, we can find the same phenomenon with the contact angle. So surfactant concentration controls the, uh, the resulting interfacial tension and the uh, wearability. Um, so here we compare the surfactant concentration and the production for different temperature. So 35 degrees Celsius, um, we had the most uh, abundant amount of the surfactant and the least at the 45 degrees Celsius. So uh, as the temperature increases more than 40 degrees Celsius, um, the temperature limits the production of the surfactant. So the temperature is the key limiting factor here. But the good thing is that the, uh, this bacteria and this species was still can survive at very high temperature, more than 40 degrees Celsius, and uh, it can also produce the um, surfactant quite a lot. Um, and uh, when you compare, lastly, when you compare the efficacy or the effectiveness of the biosurfactant, uh, the surfactant that we use here with the um, commercially available chemical surfactant, the SDS and CDS. Um, here the ETA 
shows the um, excess surface area. So biosurfactant requires much less concentration than the chemical surfactant to cover the same interfacial area. So for the same value, the level of about 1.6 to 1.8, it requires the surfactant concentration about 60 micromole to 100 micromole, maybe 60 micromole here. But when you look at the uh, CDS and the SDS, uh, the same amount of the ATARX, 1.6 to 1.8 here. So the surfactant concentration was required to be higher than 50,000 micromole, so which is a thousand times higher than the biosurfactant. So three orders more uh, orders magnitude less concentration is required for the biosurfactant. But uh, if you think about the uh, the actual cost, the bulk SDS is uh, like surfactant is three thousand to 4,000 times more expensive than the, uh, the bulk SDS, which is the chemical surfactant. So if you just com uh, multiply these two, then the, we can, we, we presume that they are the costs are quite you know, competitive huh? and comparable, the effectiveness is comparable economically. Um, <clears throat> in addition, uh, we, check the uh, displacement efficiency using PNM, pore network modeling. So we conducted the pore network modeling simulation. Here we just used the barrier sandstone as a model rock. And the case one is the without the surfactant and case two is the with the surfactant. So with the reduced capillary pressure and capillary factor. Um, as um, you can expect the residual saturation was reduced. So when there was no treatment, it was about the 17, 18%. And uh, when the surfactant was introduced, the residual water saturation, the oil saturation was about 9%. So surely the biosurfactant can increase the displacement efficiency at the core scale. Um, we wanted to check the wearability alteration in porous media uh, owing to the in-situ biosurfactant production. So we conducted a, a microfluidic experiment using the MFC. Um, first, um, let me show you yep, here. So this is the microfluidic chip that we designed. Um, the size is about seven millimeter and uh, seven and a half millimeter wide and uh, the pillar size is the 150 micrometer, and the pore size is about uh, the pore throw size is about 30 micrometer. So that's very comparable to the uh, sandstone. Uh, first, we injected the oil, so we fill the micro model with the oil, and then we injected the uh, DI water to sweep it and to reach the uh, residual oil saturation stage. And then, uh, Subsequently, we injected the bacillus subtilis flows into the oil field micro model. So, and during this, we saw that the changes in contact angle or variability, also the residual oil saturation, oil saturation. So this is the result. So firstly, when we just injected the DI water um, in the oil field micro model, then residual oil saturation was about 17%. And after that, so here the blue color shows the water and the white one, the transparent one shows the oil. Uh, when we injected the uh, surfactin containing um, growth with the uh, bacillus subtilis, then it decreased the uh, residual oil situation to uh, about 2%. So almost the, every oil was swept. Uh, so we took uh, some region of interest and uh, we analyzed the contact angle. And initially, before the treatment, the average contact angle was 155 degree. And because of the biosurfactant, it decreased to uh, 110 degree. So the uh, PDMF, the, the chip, had a strongly oil wet in the first in the beginning, and then because of the surfactant, it became a lightly oil wet or the neutrally wet. So main findings of this study is that uh, we explore the feasibility of using um, biosurfactant producing bacteria. 
and uh, um, their product in situ production at the reservoir condition to increase the oil displacement uh, efficiency. Um, and then we confirm that it is very feasible. Uh, temperature, but the temperature is uh, is the key limiting factor. So if uh, if you use the modern bacteria that we use, that the 40 degrees Celsius will be the uh, the limiting temperature. Um, so then uh, this will be suitable for uh, cold to moderate uh, temperature of the, the reservoirs. But if we find the um, um, other species that can survive and produce the biosurfactant at the higher temperature. Also, that will be the, also the target microorganism that we want to use. Um, um, and comparing to the chemical surfactant, this class of the biosurfactant will be able to show a cost competitiveness with the, uh, with the chemical surfactant. Okay, thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you in the panel session. Thank you.